Greetings Church. This is the third video that I have been trying to uh, complete here this morning. The first one got cut off by T-Mobile. The second one I accidentally hit. And so this is uh, video number three. It's an update of what's going on here in Portland. Um, I just got off the bus and um, out of the storage. I had to pick up some stuff um, from, uh, from the storage. I'm switching from the one life to the other. Uh, dealing with the sins um, and trying to get back into ministry. Very difficult. It is not easy at all. Um, I was sexually assaulted last night um, in my tent on Southwest Yam, 2nd and Yam Hill. And 2nd um, is right on the same road. I'm, I'm only three blocks away from the police department, but you know how it is here in, in America, the police don't mean nothing. All it is is a uniformed European homosexual clansman who takes down reports but does absolutely nothing with the report. The report doesn't become anything at all. Anyway, um, I was trying to, I was molested last night, according to the Lord, five times. They went in and out of the tent. Um, I did preach a sermon to them and they didn't hear me they, because they came back into the tent and molested me again. And um, went to try to use, I ate breakfast in the tent. Uh, when I went to use the restroom at Hawthorne, uh, under the Hawthorne Bridge, they had a Negro uh, in the first bathroom who wouldn't come out after 20 minutes. And they had a white woman in the uh, second bathroom that wouldn't come out. Um, when I switched over to the NATO uh, bathroom, they had a, uh, a Spanish woman with a bun in her head um, and a white jacket um, cut me off from going into the bathroom. So I figured, okay, well, obviously there's something wrong here if I'm being hit and I can't go use, I'm a narcoleptic. I'll fall asleep and they'll publicly humiliate me by taking out my genital, exposing me and having sex with my body. So I went to the police department and screamed on them. And I basically said to them that they needed to, you know, these women, these Haitian women are their slaves and they need to, um, these Haitian women are their slaves and they need to, you know, they need to, to give them their cock, you know. Um, they're your slave, you feed them. You know, I, I, but I screamed it out to the guy that was behind the desk because he was a Gabriel, he was a Queen's representative. And I said to them, and I came outside and I gave it back to them. You know, if they're your slaves, you feed them. Because if I have to go back to that country, I'm going to kill those people, regardless of who does it, you know. I don't want nothing to do with these, um, these people and their... Um, their lust for flesh. You know, they're after Europeans, they're not after me. But I'm the closest thing to a European on their side. So they're devouring my flesh. Yesterday, I saw a black woman, um, a petite little black woman, whose face reminded me of a, a woman that I met, a, a girl that I met in Haiti called Katiana. I thought the girl was related to Marianne and that was her daughter, but I think the girl was her slave. Um, she didn't look nothing like Seven Nor. And she was as black as night. I mean, I've never seen anything like it, but it's just... I have to get this out of my system. And you as a body of Christ need to know that this is what's going on, so I'm putting it online. Uh, because some of it will catch up to you. I don't know how, but it will catch up to you as a body. Um, because of the nature of the, the situation here. Anyway, after leaving, I went to the storage, and Melinda started talking, and I just told her, just shut it. I don't want to hear it, you know? Uh, you know, I don't want her to be the voice in my head. You know, she's rebuking me. I'm cursing her out and she's cursing me out. And I know that the people in the storage don't want to hear that kind of talk. They don't want to hear that kind of talk. They don't want to feel that kind of spirit coming out of a tenant. I'm a tenant. I'm, that, that's not my home. It's just a place that I rent to put my stuff in. But I'm so irritated by what they're doing that it pissed me off. You know, yesterday, the Lord told me that I couldn't go to the library. I couldn't go to 24 hours. I couldn't do any ministry. And I'm thinking, well, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Um, the night before, he had given me 20, 20 bucks and I went to, um, through the community, he gave me $20 and I went to um, um, Buffalo Wild Wings. And you know, the sad thing about Buffalo Wild Wings is that there's a blurb at the end of, um, there's a blurb at the end of one of the, the menus where you can't really tell whether or not uh, what the price is for for the food here here is the um here's the receipt here for, for buffalo wild wings so you know that i'm not lying okay here's, here's buffalo wild wings receipt okay 
and when you when you go into the um, when you when you open up the, the menu you can see that 1648 right and you see that 1143 49 I thought that was how much the wings were um, including including the fries because the way it's worded and it turned out that the wings were for 11.49 and the, the fries came separately but if you read it it looks like it says it's this amount you know six wings for 11.49 eight wings for this amount ten wings for this amount including the fries except for the words including is not in there but it's 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 insinuate it, it insinuated so i went and ordered that and some fries and when they came back they gave me um, the receipt and it was 1648. I wasn't pissed off. I just thought it was funny that the blurb kind of made it seem as if that's how much it was for you know both chicken and fries. Um, some people were offended by that and they brought it up as an issue. You know, and I'm listening to this and I couldn't go back because when I asked the, the, the waitress, she was like, oh, well, you know, oh no, people always think that, but no, that's not what it is. It's uh, the fries are different than um, the, the, the price of the fries is different than the price of the chicken. And I think that needs to be corrected. You know, do I go to a manager? And of course I had two huge bags. I had a big green backpack and a black duffel bag. And it's like, no, I'm not gonna go talk to the manager because to them I'm a homeless vagrant and they, they gave me no respect. And so I was cut, you know, whether or not it was cut down, later on Melinda says to me, no, actually Kevin, most people, when they order the chicken, it just comes with the fries. She did that on purpose. It was a direct hit. So, you know, I think the Lord was still pissed off about that because the next day um, I couldn't do ministry and I couldn't go to work. So I, I was asked to, what? Okay. Well, anyway, I couldn't do the work and I had to figure out what to do. So I ended up, um, I ended up going to uh, Mr. Peep and I did that for the situation and for the money. Uh, for about a minute or so you know i had to go in there and, and unfortunately i had to do that or else you know, i would have been snaked okay um that's what i was told so they didn't give me the snake they gave me the other um i went to what is it called i went to um join and i asked them for a tent uh that had windows in it because the one that i have is completely covered um and unless i leave the door open um there's no windows there's no ventilation you know, the guy that had given it to me didn't give me a tent with windows, he gave me one without one. So, and since I've already written the New Testament church on there, I didn't want to hand it back to him. That would have been inappropriate. Um, if it had nothing on there, um, it would have been one thing, but I have already written on it. So I asked, him. he was passing out tents and taking um, a list for the tents, and I asked him whether or not he could uh, give me one. Apparently, um, things didn't work out that way I had asked for a new pair of shoes um, because you know my shoes have holes in them both of them on both sides and uh, he lingered and I guess he was a homosexual I'm not exactly sure who he was and um, he didn't give me the shoes and the shoes that he gave to me had orange in it so he was playing either with Gabriel or with the Queen um, the community came out the homeless came out uh, the African American community came out. The tent that was that was going to be handed to me because I asked for one with a window. This young woman came out, and I guess she was supposed to be an Elish uh, representative. I had seen a couple of her videos, and she turned out to be not a friend and an enemy. And I guess she's representing Melinda in the community. That's how they're talking out here. Uh, but you know, she had sunglasses on, and she pulled out a knife, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure why they had a Hispanic come out. Um, yesterday I seen about six, five or six people who, who pulled out their knives. Now me, I'm gonna show you my knife. This is not for attacking people. This here is for me carving, this here is for me carving apples, pears. You understand? This is for me cutting food. This isn't for me to cut and kill and hurt people. So yesterday they sent um, a Hispanic, I think he was Hispanic, he might have been white, pissed off at join, and this guy drops all of his personal property, this knife come jumping out. I was on the other side of the fence picking fruits, and when I saw that, I was just like, well, no, I don't want any part of it, you know? I walked away, but somehow he communicated something to the, to the young woman with dark hair who was really short, 
and it seems like I've been getting sh judged by the short community here in Portland. If they're foot, four foot tall and under, they're my enemies. And man, they're walking around like this. They're pissed off. They're pissed off. They're ready to kill. So I, I don't know who these people are. It's the same thing with the kids too. So I'm not exactly sure where this is coming from. from so I'm thinking it's it's the devil's, you know, it's the devil who has this this chip, this thing against me. So anyway, um, join. The worker kept on going in and out, but he wasn't going according to his list. Um, when I saw him hand the tent, the tent that might have had the windows on it, and she took it, and then he switched to uh, seven by seven tents, which were blue. And I'm thinking, okay, this is this is this is this is this is this is, this is being done on purpose. Um, she was wearing something orange, so that indicated that was Gabriel, and the sunglasses the tent I mean just too many hints you know clues um, and then she pulls out a knife and I'm thinking okay I, I gotta figure this out right so I gave it to her just to see whether or not that's what it was it that's exactly what it was there was an african-american he took it and he had one of those things around his ankles where they have to uh, they monitor where he goes and what he does because of cr previous crimes that he has committed well they gave him an orange jacket he took the orange jacket and he started talking to me like I came out on him. In other words, he took her position. She took the, the Mexican's position. I guess the Mexican took Gabriel's position. Gabriel took the, the monarch's position, the queen's position. So I'm sitting there arguing with this African-American and I'm saying to him, I'm not talking to you. He's like, oh yeah, you're talking to me. I'm going, oh, I'm talking to you now because you have an orange jacket and you're assuming the position of that woman who was assuming the position of the man and who was assuming the position of the, so it's like, I, I, I don't, I'm not a part of any of that. Um, he hands me a pair of gray shoes and he was wearing gray himself. And I guess the guy was a homosexual, I don't know. Because later on, a bunch of people that looked just like him and there was a, a fight staged at, the, uh, at 99 um, Holgate, a, a fight that was staged between a light-skinned uh, African-American with this white guy. And I guess the white guy is in the series. He takes off his shirt and they're, they're cursing at each other. They look like they're about to throw down. It was a bad day, okay? So anyway, long story short, I ended up just giving him back the shoes because when you flip the shoes underneath, it was orange. So I said, no, I'll give, I'll give you back the shoes. I don't wanna play the game. I'll just come back at another time. They let me walk, but before they did, they, they sent an African, a black skin African. He was about 6'6 six, six or 6'7. Six, so this guy towers over me. I mean, he was like way up there, okay? And he didn't even look at me. And so, and he started talking down and I'm like, this isn't happening. So from the little black, from the little white woman, all the way now to this giant African standing in front of me, and I, I don't know what the altercation is with him, but he took it from, from from the from the guy before, who took it from the girl, who took it from the Spanish, who took it from Gabriel, who took it from whoever. So I walked away thinking, and I, all I said was, I'm not African American. Okay, I walked away from the whole thing, went to Winco, bought some food, and. Um, went downtown and ate my food and that, that's what I thought was it but when they caught up to me they raped and uh, and molested me which I didn't think that was very good I, I didn't like that at all so anyway um, this morning uh, before leaving the storage getting back to today now before leaving the storage um, the newspaper article here in the Portland Tribune has um, some um, some military men on the outside of it and the issue that i brought up was that i don't understand this government that they went and fetched forty-eight thousand people as um you know they're rescuing um the afghanistanians where if you look from a distance you know i call these homeless people afghanistanians here in the united states american afghanistanians from a distance you can look and you can see tents upon tents of the homeless that are not being cared for and this is the and here it is the government is right there and here's American Afghanistan's right over there you can't you can't even, I'm not gonna go near these people because these people don't like Kevin D you understand they don't like Kevin they don't want to hear anything that Kevin has to say so you know I address the issue of them being Afghanistanians um, and the fact that the government has neglected um, the fact that the government has neglected um, there are people right there. They're all in tents and they're all around the park. They're across the river in, in a compound or in concentration camp in, in these little booths. 
uh, just like the Jews were in booths. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's like the situation here in the United States, if you gather all of us uh, uh, together, the ones under the bridge, uh, the ones in the doorways, the one that just sleeps on the sidewalks, uh, the ones that are in tents, the ones that are in, 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 um, in Portland Rescue Union Gospel night after night, we, we make up more than 48,000. And this government here has neglected us uh, and we're not talking about sleeping bags and plates of food. We're talking about re being removed completely out of that situation. I wasn't in that situation when I came into um, the West Coast. But ever since I met Dr. John MacArthur, that's the situation that he has put me in um, after graduating from CSUN in two and a half years of seminary. And so it's like, I, I, don't, I don't understand this. You know, the district attorney, they're looking at me and going, we're not gonna do a damn thing to help you, you know? And so this morning, um, I went and I, and I preached them this, this passage here out of Romans. And I also went into, um, I went into Corinthians. Now I'm trying to remember. Um, preached to them out of Thessalonians. Um, you know, the, the, the passage that says in 1 Thessalonians 4. Um, I think Hebrews and Thessalonians was what I used. Um, in Thessalonians 4, the scripture says, um, uh, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, uh, that each of you, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust, like Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger, is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has called, not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. I also went into Hebrews and, um, and preached on this. And uh, I don't know how long I preached for. But Hebrews 13 says, um, um, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Uh, and, then I, and then I finalized it with Revelations 21.8 that says, but as for the cowardly, um, the faithful, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers and sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion would be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So those were the passages that I used this morning to defend the fact that this, what these African women are doing is not morally right. What these um, homosexuals are giving people, homophobites are giving people permission to do is not right here in Portland, not to me and not to these people that are in tents. And I know it's happening because if it's happening to me, um, and it, it's happening to others, you know, probably members of the New Testament church that will not voice their opinion and say that this is what's going on. Anyway, I think I've said more than enough to keep you up to date with what's happening here. And, um, and it doesn't get any better, you know, it gets worse and worse every day. Uh, and me, I've lost my, 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 my respect for the American government and the American people, and they've lost their respect for me. So we're, you know, we're, we're going in opposite directions here. Um, and, um, but they're, they're, they're the ones that are constantly on me because they follow me, they drug me, they knock me out, they use me. And, um, and that's not cool with me, you know. And I think, and, I, and if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they might be taking, writing stimulus checks and then cashing them. You know, when they when the stimulus check comes in my name, they give it to someone else. You know, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think that's that may be going on too, um, where you know the, the, those people are writing him, and because every time the Lord says you need to go to the post office and pick up your check, um, there's no check there, and I know that He's not lying to me. And so if he's not lying, then somebody else is taking it and cashing it uh, because they have my driver's license. So anyway, that's what's going up here in Portland. And uh, it's always a sad story, never a salvation story. So anyway, keep Portland in your prayers, church. God bless you.